Good morning. Welcome back to our off-grid homestead. They were building from scratch here in North Idaho. Good morning. Joe's, it's getting to be crunch time. It is crunch time. Every day is crunch time around here. Crunch time because, well, we want to get this house finished and the yard relatively finished for a wedding. Sarah's wedding's coming up. We started off living in tents right over there, cleared the land, started building the house. We're working on clearing some more land right now. We've got a lot of different projects planned for this video, starting off with preparing the land for the new shop. We've got a landscape rake and we've got a box blade. We're gonna be preparing that area. So let's cruise over there and I'll show you what it looks like. Let's check out this area here. This is where the new shop is going. Berm pile right here we've got to take care of. And then whoosh, look over here. Just to kind of give you some, some perspective. The house is right over there. And the land slopes down right, right here. And then comes back up and it's level again here. So this is why we're putting the shop here. This is the level spot closest to the house. But man, look at all of the sticks and roots we've got to clean up. So we're gonna level this, get it all cleaned up. Mm, probably starting right about now. Seth, is the pile still warm? Yep. Really? Yeah, you can hear it crackling too. Wow. We're kicking up a lot of dust. Oh yeah. <laughs> Making some pretty good progress here. There's still a lot of roots, but it's a start, right? This looks much better than say this. And Jules is doing an awesome job out here. What's that? I wonder if I'm melting the soles of my boots. Oh, I don't know. I just kind of got like a warm feeling. <laughs> probably not, but it just dawned on me that I probably can't feel it. And I can hear it crackling. Yeah. So. It's still a little hot in some areas, huh? Yeah, especially right there in the middle. Yeah. Like, listen to that. Oh, yeah. When I hit it with it. Yeah. A couple spots would have done that. But you spread it out really good to like expose a lot more of it, so going good you know what's crazy is that it smelled so good really yeah i mean like i was holding my breath you know for most of the part yeah most of the time but it smelled so good i don't know what it was what tree that was but maybe the cedar i maybe. don't know the combination of everything Well, Marty is getting that area all cleaned up from all the roots and stumps and getting it smooth. Seth and I are going to turn our attention to this right here, this side of the house. We're going to clean up this stuff, move it so that Marty can come in and clean it. We gotta move this pile. There's also a pile of um, rocks over there that he's gonna use. I think he's gonna dump them into this area right here, which is our man entrance to our root cellar. As you can see, it is collecting a lot of water. There's just so much clay right now that it is not draining very well. So we're gonna dump some rocks down there just to give it a little head start and hopefully curb some of the mosquitoes. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's a lot of mosquitoes breeding down there. Any water in there? A little bit. A little bit. Two All right, well, we're gonna need to drain it before we can move it. There's the water, guys. Not much left. 
we have to wait to move the water tank because dad's on the tractor right now and it's too heavy for us to move ourselves so instead we get to touch up the chicken coop yeah <laughs> probably saw in the last video when marty was showing you our chicken coop this nice streak right here seth and i were painting in the rain and it just <sighs> spread down like that also this edge right here it was too wet so I'm going to go ahead and paint that black. And then I think I might get a drip edge and put on the front and the back of the coop. Other than that, it's just a little minor touch up paint. And look at Marty's progress. It looks so awesome. All right, guys, I wanted to give you a quick kind of uh, overview or sneak peek here of kind of what the studio is going to look like. We've got our lights set up. We've got some lights in the back, although it's not quite finished back there yet. Let me know what you think about the new setup here for the new channel and the new podcast. And if you're interested in getting notified of when that channel goes live, there is a link down in the description below that you can click and I will send you a notification personally once we are ready to rock and roll. So Jules, what do you think about the new studio setup? I love it. I think it looks super comfortable and happy and I love the world map behind you. You know, one of the things about having such a, a small space for a studio is that you can heat it and cool it like with something fairly small to do that. And it is a little chilly in here today. And so that brings us actually to today's sponsor. Uh, we're going to we're going to set up a heating and cooling system in here because uh, in the summertime, it's going to be hot and the house doesn't have air conditioning. And in the wintertime, it's going to be pretty cool in here, probably with the door shut, especially. So we're going to want to heat and cool it. Studio is put back together to be like a normal office. So let's cruise out here and see what we're going to use to actually heat and cool that place. Already got started opening it up here. This is actually the EcoFlow Wave 2. It's an air conditioner and heater we're gonna set up in there today. Thank you EcoFlow for sponsoring this video, by the way. So let's see what we've got in the box here. We've got some cool round things, probably for exhaust air, I'm guessing. Marty, does it seem weird to you that it's May and we're still running um, a fire? Stove? I know it, huh? <laughs> North Idaho for you. Another. Another cool piece there. All right. And another piece. And these guys right here are the duct work for it. We've got a big one and a little one. And looks like a drain hose and a power cable. Wow, look at that bad boy. Wow, that looks fancy. I know, it looks like a spaceship or something. We've got this cool thing over here. It's like an add-on bonus. This is the battery for it. Huh. Ooh, check out that guy. Wow. Yeah, Sleek. that's cool, huh? So this guy should slide right onto the battery. Oh yeah, like oh, that. Clicks in place. Look at that bad boy. Huh. So you guys are seeing like real life here. Yeah, it goes this way. Somebody trying to figure it out for the first time. Here we Without go. reading the instructions. <laughs> Pretty easy, not too bad. Yeah, I just glanced at them. Figured I could probably figure it out. So you could definitely figure it out if you read the directions. This guy looks like it goes right on here. Maybe this big one goes in the back. Cool. Haha. -ha. now we're ready. Ho -ho. Look at that. Wow gonna go on here for sure. Oh. Look so who we, came for a visit. Hi Watcher, <laughs> what's up? He's like, oh, thanks for the kitty door. <laughs> so we've got our uh, window system set up here. Exhaust. And our intake. Oh, dude, that's so cool. It's working the way that it ought to work. We're recycling the air back outside. The cold air is all staying outside, and only hot air now is coming inside. And then when we reverse that, 
all the hot air will stay outside and only cold air will be inside. And what's really cool about the Wave 2, when you're using it for cooling especially, and it's gonna depend on where you live and how much sun you have, of course, but for cooling, then when it's hot, it's typically sunny. So you have plenty of power to run this and keep your place cool in an emergency. But in the winter time, if you live in a place where it's sunny, then you can use this for heating as well. Was it two summers ago? There was like this crazy run, like emergency run up here in North Idaho for AC units, like window units. It was crazy. Marty and I actually were in that boat and we had to drive all the way to Spokane to find a window unit AC. One thing that I heard the most of during that time is that people just wanted one room in their house for their elderly loved ones to be able to get in and to have relief because it got really hot. I mean, there was so, there was lines outside of Home Depot before they opened of people who were just wanting to get one AC and they actually had a limit. Um, you could buy one unit per family and then people were buying them and then selling them for ridiculous prices online. One of the reasons that we like to partner with EcoFlow is not only because they make like really good products is because kind of their, their whole mindset is about capturing that energy from the sun, storing that energy in the battery right down here, Right? and then utilizing that energy. And so, you know, they have the solar generators, they have the new air conditioner that came out, the Wave 2. They also have the Glacier refrigerator, freezer, ice maker that we showed you a little while ago. And also, they're coming out with something that's pretty cool, not so much for us because our property is so big, but for like in an urban environment, it's called the Blade, and it's like a robot um, lawnmower. It looks pretty cool. So let me just share with you some of the facts about the Wave 2. It is apparently the world's first portable heating and cooling system like this that's solar powered. It will also run off of the battery for up to eight hours in eco mode. This thing will go anywhere. You could put it in your van, in your truck, in your RV. You could even use it in a tent, I suppose if that's what you wanted to do. There are five ways to operate this guy off of AC power, which we're doing now as we're charging the battery. You could run it off of solar power. You could use a cigarette lighter in your car. You could use the battery that's right here with it. And you could also use like another portable solar generator to power this guy. So if you're interested in checking out one of these guys, they've got a special early bird deal right now. You get $600 off. Plus, if you click the link down in the description below and use my code EFJohnson5, you will get an additional 5% off. That's up to June 15th. And so once again, we want to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video and helping our studio stay both cool and warm all year long. Another beautiful morning in here on the homestead on our very bumpy off-grid road. Tuxer, you're having a hard time just standing there, aren't you? <sighs> We're off to get fuel. Don't tell me about yourself, cause I don't need any more help to fall for you. All right, we made it to the petrol station. I want to show you guys this right here. So this is regular diesel and this is off-road diesel. And here's the price difference between the two. So with the off-road diesel, you're not paying the uh, road tax, basically. You're not supposed to use it in a vehicle that you drive on the road. It's more for tractors, generators, things like that, that uh, don't drive on the highway. Diesel is supposed to go in the yellow cans like these two, and this is supposed to only be for gasoline, but because I know that this can, which is really old and actually orange now, is used for diesel, we put diesel in it, but it's only for gasoline technically. Also, look at the fun, cool projects coming up. Water heater, gas piping, all kinds of fun stuff coming up. But first, man, we gotta get this yard finished. We get it planted before it gets too hot. We made it home to where we're doing some great work guys i want you to look at this it looks pretty good on camera but in real life it's too high over here and over here basically this whole side needs to be drug this way and uh, the rental place they gave us the box blade right but no ripper teeth on it so it's super slow going but 
they got some for us finally they found them or whatever however they got them they got them and so Seth's gonna go down and pick those up today they only have three though the box blade takes five so hopefully we can get that to work properly with uh just three and get that leveled much better than it already is because man that's where the shop's going be great if it was level That. here's another area that we've been working on getting nice and level but before we can finish up here we've got to get all this stuff moved because it's all in the way the next thing that needs to be moved is actually going to probably be a lot more challenging than just moving that little stuff right there. I told him that Seth and I tried yesterday. Or yeah. We tried without you. <laughs> Unsuccessful. Yeah, I think it's going to be way heavy. It's like full of water. Not full, but there's water in the bottom of it. And so we got to probably, I don't know. So was this, this was broken off already? Yeah, this was broken, and then Seth and I were able to lift it a little bit, and water was coming out. Okay. A little bit. Well, let's see if we can't tip it up. Something about the wonderful way the sun is coming up today. It's saying everything's all right. I can't believe the way I'm feeling. It's like I'm floating up and dreaming. Yeah, baby, everything's all right. Everything's all right. Oh, I know. Seth and I are rotating mattresses around. <laughs> Marty and I are taking the good one, the birch, down to our final resting spot. <laughs> We've had so many different bedrooms, but that is gonna be our final one. This is Sarah's temporary next to Seth up here. Strolling up and down the sidewalk, and you can see a smile when I talk. Oh, it's nice not to have that anymore. What's that, Walking the mattress? Away, the mattress. Yeah. Like the kitchen looks so much bigger. Thanks to Seth. Look at this, guys. Oh, baby. We got the ripper teeth. Well, we got three of the five. So stick these guys in there and let's go rip it. So they fit in here somehow. Not from the top, apparently. All right, look at that. We got some ripper teeth in there. So hopefully we'll be able to take down this high side. Let me just show you one more time here real quick. It's low right across here and the high right across there. So we're gonna try to take that side over to this side. Ooh, we got the uh, chicken coop up. So let's just walk over here and we're gonna make sure where we wanna put it. Uh, because, well, we don't wanna have to move it again too soon. Is but, it its final resting place too? No, probably not its <laughs> final resting place. But it'll be good and they can make a mess over here. I told them that our bedroom was being moved to our final resting place. Cool, that's right. So idea number one is right in here, Joel. Okay. Idea number two is up here. Well, we've got this like electric fencing that we're gonna put um, yeah. all around them. We could put it right up here. There's a lot more trees up here. And then we could put the electric fence in the road and around it and over there and around here. And it would, it would give them this whole area of trees like that better okay it's further away from the house but they i like the idea of the tree cover yeah that oh, way yeah. the predators don't the bald eagle doesn't get them that we just uh i just showed you earlier in the video 
And that, yeah, and if, Hold on. if we put them down there, that's a low spot. Mm hmm. Yeah. Up here in this little shady spot. Yeah, I think we better go up here. Okay. How nice is it to have a tractor, Seth? Wait. <laughs> chicken coop over here we're gonna try to come in from the back side and try to move it backwards hey kitty <laughs> <laughs> that's not your home so it is now you bring me the chickens how about right there okay. the block has was in between these two trees okay tell me when Put a couple blocks underneath the legs just to make sure that it's level. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. That way, that way. I think I would like to just replace those. They're not just set in there. No, I, I did clean them up. I did leave them, man. You think? Yeah. Okay. It's they pretty clean in there. Yeah, they don't mind poop. They don't mind poop. <laughs> They're gonna get their own poop on them. That's true. Nice. Yeah, it's cool. Yep. All right. Ready for chickens. Yeah, they've got Someday. a couple more weeks though before they're big enough to be out here. Raccoon proof. We got these kind of latches and this latch plus a locking automatic door. I think they're gonna be safe. Yeah. We've got it all smoothed out and looking good. This right here is white clover seed, Dutch white clover. We got a lot of it. We're putting it in these cans to uh, to get it into the spreader. And we got this whole area right here already seeded. Jules is just giving it its first little drink. Oh, I mean, Seth is just giving it its first little drink. He just took over. <laughs> cool. Hey, um, make sure it gets kind of soaked. See the water puddle up water a little bit. Up, yeah. So what do you think, Jules? How long is it going to take to water? Uh, about an acre and a half. Ten hours. Ten hours. <laughs> It's gonna take a while, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're gonna have to have shifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>